The rotator cuff is composed of four tendons. We usually scan the tendon in the order of subscapularis, supraspinalis, infraspinalis, and the teres minor tendon. In scanning the shoulder joint, the patient is usually positioned to sit upright on a stool with the forearm on the laps. Ultrasound of the shoulder begins with the long head of a biceps tendon, which is a reference landmark. When we place the transducer in the horizontal position, the bicep tendon can be found as a rounded echogenic structure between greater and lesser tuberosity. Long axis view of the subscapularis tendon is best demonstrated with the patient's arm in external rotation. The tendon is then pulled laterally and anteriorly for scanning. As we rotate the transducer 90 degrees and make it perpendicular to the ground, short axis view of the tendon can be imaged. To get a picture of a supraspinalis tendon, move the patient's arm in internal rotation position and put the patient's back of the hand on the buttock. The long axis view of a supraspinalis tendon can be imaged from anterior part of the shoulder. Put the transducer in vertical position. The tendon can be seen as an echogenic beak-shaped structure. Turn the transducer to a horizontal position. You can see the short axis view of the tendon. Be aware of any change of the uh, morphology and the echogenicity of the tendon to determine the pathologies. In this cut, deltoid muscle, subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and hyaline cartilage can be also seen. An alternative position to get a supraspinous tendon is called a modified crest position. Have the patient put the palm on the back pocket while keeping the elbow directed posteriorly. The shoulder is now in external rotation and hyperextension position. The transducer is placed parallel to the humeral shaft so that the long axis view of the supraspinous tendon can be taken. The position is especially useful for the patient who cannot tolerate the shoulder pain at the internal rotation. Infraspinalis and the teres minor tendons are examined at the same position. By putting the patient's arm across the chest with the hand on the opposite shoulder, the posterior cuff is examined by placing the transducer on the posterior lateral part of the shoulder. The infraspinalis tendon can be visualized inferior to the spine of the scapula. Dynamic study can be done with active or passive external internal rotation of the patient's shoulder. Injection is safer and more accurate when it is performed under guidance of ultrasound. Now, we are going to demonstrate the ultrasound-guided injection to subacromial subdeltoid bursa. After careful sterilization of the patient's skin and the transducer, insert a needle in the same plane of ultrasound beam. The echogenic metallic needle can be visualized under ultrasound. Be careful to place the needle in parallel plane to the transducer to augment the visualization of the needle and make injection easier. Carefully insert the needle toward the bursa until the needle tip reaches the target. As the needle tip goes into the bursa, inject a little amount of fluid to make sure the tip is right in the bursa. Once when we make sure the fluid is injected into the bursa, more fluid can be injected safely without leakage to the surrounding muscle and the tendons. After skin prepare, the injection is usually completed in one or two minutes.